Hey guys, welcome back to Chase the Unknown this week. I hope you guys have had a great week so far. My name is Roger Sisk, I'm one of your hosts here, along with Trinity Dobbs and Jared Robert Todd. Today, Trinity and I are back talking to Susan Willis of Mama Bear Casting. She was such a blast to have on, and we were excited to bring her back for a part two. Susan, thank you so much for coming back on the podcast today. Thank you so much. Hold on, let me change hats. But yeah, so tell us a little bit more about your um, acting experience. Awesome. Well, I've been acting professionally. We'll just say I've been acting professionally since 2014. Um, uh, but uh, meaning I had an agent January mm. 2014. Um, didn't get a lot of auditions just because my agent was out in uh, in Florida, and yeah. self tapes were just kind of starting to be a thing, but yeah. not really. Um, and so I really just dove into background work and I did a lot of background work and I was mm. fighting words with his background acting. It's a discipline. It's not, mm. I, I wouldn't put it on my resume anymore, <laughs> but it definitely, definitely built, uh, built set experience and knowledge and networking. And there's, I have some friends to this day that I met, we were background together. In fact, my agent, used to be a background artist and she and I met as background long before she was an agent. And it's just, you never know. Like Tiffany. You said, never know. I'm sorry, Trinity. I have a good friend named Tiffany and I'm <laughs> keep to call you Tiffany. Oh, that's okay. Uh, I, you know, I, I love my days doing background and even when I was pursuing acting and getting auditions, I still did some background work, but, but now I've, I've officially doused that lamp. Uh, of doing like the paid background work only because as an actor pursuing more um, credible, you know, weighty, weighty projects, mm -hmm. we'll say um, it, it doesn't, it hurts my chances of being taken seriously. If I continue to do background work, uh, for example, there was a TV show. I probably shouldn't mention any names, but it's a big TV show. And I, when I signed with my current agent, I, I had signed on to do a season as, as, a, as a core background for a TV show mm -hmm. uh, that was going to go through October, December. Well, I started doing background work in May and we're, we're talking like a week at a time, do a week yeah. and then mm -hmm. off, and then a week. Um, and it was taking up a lot of my time. It didn't pay a lot. I mean, a week at a time did, you know, and luckily I had a friend in Atlanta that I could stay with. Mm. Um, but to, to be taken seriously, not as in you're joking, but to be, if you have an agent, you don't want to tell your agent, no, I can't do this audition because I'm booked to do background work. Mm -hmm, yeah. You, right. know, you don't want to hurt your, plus if your background on say an episodic television show, um, like the resident or the walking dead or stranger things or Ozark or anything like that. And then all of a sudden you want to be taken seriously as an actor. It could, it, it could hurt your chances of being, you know, if you were the janitor in a hospital scene and now, and you were just a featured background, but you were pretty much established. And now all of a sudden a role comes up for a hospital administrator they can't they can't audition you for that because you can't be seen like that or like you were an extra as a prisoner and now you want to be auditioned for the lawyer for somebody it's not going to make sense so yeah i i had to make the tough decision and just stop pursuing background and and i have i've i've really really enjoyed the amount of auditions that i've had that the faith my agent has put into me with the some of the caliber of things that I've, that I've done. I haven't stopped pursuing stuff myself. Uh, having an agent does not save your, you know, it doesn't make it a bed of roses. If anything, you have to work harder, yeah. uh, have an agent. So. Interesting. Yeah. So. Because a lot of people think that it's easier once the agent, you have one, because then they, they do most in, in their words, they do most of the work and then you just have to audition and go. But really, you have to do equal, if not more work, because you have to audition, you have to show yeah. up and you have to make time right then and there to do what you need to do and then go from there. Yeah, yeah so. you need to, um, even with my first agent, I mean, she was very specific. You need to be in training. You need to always be, you need to take at least one to two classes a year, like legit classes that are going to go on your resume. Um, you need to show that you're training because if you're not training, it's going to show up in your, in your tapes because your tapes aren't going to get any better. Your auditions won't be getting any better because you're not mm -hmm. training. 
you just think right. you're it, you know, like, um, you had asked me the question, um, on the last segment about what if you're not, you're getting rejected all the time, maybe because mm-hmm. you're doing, you're doing the same thing all the time and it's not getting any better. Yeah. You know, right. it could be you're not right for the role, but maybe there's a way you could make it make, there's always, there's always room for improvement. Yeah. So, right. um, I'm still self-submitting. I don't self-submit as often or as much, but mm-hmm. you have an agent, the agents are seeing all of the network stuff and the big, big stuff that you can't, we all can have accounts on Actors Access, which is the main platform. So if there's an actor out there, get on Actors Access. Even if you just want to look around and just get familiar with the casting calls, that's the, the number one tip. If you were going to ask that later, I'm sorry, I already no, you're that. fine. <laughs> but <laughs> Actors Access right. is like the main platform. And I'm always encouraging people that get on there. That way you can see how it's worded, especially if you come from the background world, you can see how it's worded differently or the same. And that where that's where you can see all the details about this project. You can see the breakdown of what kind of project it is. And a lot of times in background, unless you follow that TV show, you may not know what you're getting into. You're like, Oh, I got another gig. I'm background. I don't know what I am. I'm church member number four. I don't know. Yeah. You know, I, mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't know what it's about, you know, <laughs> um, at least when you're, when you're pursuing speaking roles, but a lot of the speaking roles that you self submit for are going to be your lower, your, you know, your indie films that, uh, could just be a local filmmaker, whether you know a local filmmaker, like the eighties one that I was telling you about in the last segment that I got mm-hmm. involved with, you know, um, those are the types of things that I can get good footage from to add to my reel. Mm-hmm. If I book the latest feature film or the biggest TV show, I'm probably, they're not going to give me demo reel footage. You know, I got paid. That was my compensation. So it's hard to build my demo footage from the big stuff until it airs or mm-hmm. it's released. And then I have to, you know, go find a bootleg copy of it somewhere. Oh, yeah. You know, I have the credit on my resume, but Mm -hmm. I don't have the proof. And so um, you self-submit, you can book, but when you have the agent, they are able to take to, to, they get your back on the other stuff Mm -hmm. and they submit you for a lot. I mean, I can't, I don't even know how many things my agent has submitted me for, but getting the audition, just, just being honored with being able to audition means, wow, they took notice of me. They want to give me a shot. Mm-hmm. So I've won either way I've won and I'm happy that I've gotten the audition and made it that far. Look at, I like the way that you're looking at it in terms of um, like you've won either way, you know, you may have not gotten the role this time, but you've gotten in front of them, you've gotten exposure, you know, and they've, they've seen something in you. And so that's, that's definitely something to hold on to. So that's really good. And I mean, I've, I, I don't want to say I'm cheating, but I kind of, I'm able to see it from both sides, Mm -hmm. from the casting director side of me, because I know that if my agent submitted me, she sees something in me. And if they selected me for an audition, they took the time to look at my profile or uh, they've seen me audition before. And they're like, you know what? She always gives a solid audition. You know, maybe that last role wasn't her, but maybe this one and they'll see more and more. And uh, I think it was um, big casting director in Atlanta, uh, Feldstein in Paris. Um, Tara Feldstein and Chase Paris. Uh, mm-hmm. I listened into one of their their recent podcast. I just I love listening to pick their brain. Yeah. Um, yeah. And and they said right. when they look at audition tapes, they know that if they if they keep bringing you back, it's because you know they see you in something, or they you know and and it's a lot of times it's not the casting director that makes the ultimate decision. It's production. Mm-hmm. It's the director. But the casting directors are entrusted with giving the top three, five, 10 choices based on what the cast. So the casting director has to be a good screener for the talent coming in. Um, I don't want to give, I don't, you know, if I have 50 tapes and one of those is somebody that just decided to wake up yesterday and be an actor and they taped on their cell phone this way instead of this way. And the lighting is horrible. I am not going to show that to the director, you know, so I've made it that far because I'm studying the crap. Like I said, you're always working. If you have an agent, then once your agent puts you in for a gig, then they expect you to turn in a top notch audition video Mm. with your top notch. So every audition is a blessing 
because one, I get to practice my craft. I've been training for this moment forever. I've been practicing. I've been training for auditions. And then once you book the role, yeah, it's, it's supposedly easier. <laughs> I have booked some things and, and my most recent uh, success was, was my most terrifying moment on set ever, <laughs> but whatever. <laughs> Please elaborate on that topic right now. I'm curious. <laughs> Um, I was very fortunate to audition for Raven Drummer and I booked it uh, and it freaked me out because I did, I totally did what my agent said, you know, you submit, you forget. I submitted, I forgot. She called me up to tell me I booked the role. This was a year ago, um, mm -hmm. well, like July. She's like, hey, you booked the role. And I went, huh? What? I didn't even remember what it was for. So she told me when it was for, and then she told me when it was filming. And I was so bummed because it was the same day that my son was to be moving into his apartment in Charleston for his senior year of college. Mm. I, I, uh, I can't say no. Um, so I accepted the role. And then I actually had a call back in Atlanta. Let me see if I can make this story short. The filming was on a Thursday. I had a call back for a commercial in Atlanta on Wednesday. So I was able to stay with my friend Wednesday night to go in to shoot Thursday. Well, after my, my call back on Wednesday, I got a call from the second AD that said, hey, can you come in? We might be bumping your scene to tonight instead of tomorrow. Can, are you in town? Can you come in? I'm like, sure. So I went to my friend's house to, to just chill. They said, well, we'll let you know. About 5.30, they called and said, hey, we're gonna, we're gonna or maybe it was four o'clock. They said, hey, we're, we're gonna go ahead and bump your scene. Can you go ahead and come on into the studio? We'll email you where you need to go. Okay, great. So I go in, I, I wasn't on the list and I wasn't on the list because I wasn't going to be on the call sheet until the next day. So they had bumped everything up. So nothing was documented for today. So already I feel stupid, you know, it's like, <laughs> okay, whatever. Um, so I get in, I get in and it's all, oh, we weren't expecting you. Oh yeah, I know. Cause I'm supposed to be tomorrow, but they call me in today, whatever. So anyway, it's 530. Basically, I went through my fitting. I sat in holding, in my holding room. My little lonely, it was very lonely. Oh, <laughs> For myself. I was like, hello, I'm still here, I'm still here. Um, <laughs> and they're like, hey, do you want to run lines? I'm like, I don't have my script. Uh, do you have a script for me? I mean, is it, cause I'm, I, you know, it could have been different than my audition or it could have been more, less. Finally, it's like 8.30, we go to dinner, 9, 10, 10.30 rolls around. They're like, hey, we're not going to use you today. We're actually going to film you tomorrow. Oh. Okay, no problem. I was hoping to film this sucker tonight. Then I could have gone home and gone with my husband and son to move him into Charleston, blah, 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 yeah. blah, blah. So I go back to my friend's house, stay the night, call time next morning, like 11 in the morning or whatever. Well, he was filming two episodes of two different shows at the same time. And I go in and get all checked in. I sit down and they're like, hey, we're not going to start with the show that you're doing. We're going to start with the other show. So it's going to be a while. I'm like, okay, I'll just sit in my little lonely room, whatever. And, um, oh, by the way, on the way to the studio, my car got sideswiped and oh. my driver's side mirror was taken off. Oh, no. While I'm exiting from I-20 onto 75 South to go down to the studio, literally this car just kind of bump me. Uh. So I was 20 minutes late getting into, I'm sitting at the front of the studios waiting. The lines are backed up. A fire truck goes into the studio. There was some gas leak or something in another building. Oh, on the set. So I'm just, I'm just like, <laughs> I took a picture of the gate and I still have it on my phone. I sent it to the second ID. I'm like, I'm waiting to get in. I, I need my call time. I'm, I'm not going to be there. So I finally get in and then they come tell me like, well, we had a seat for you in the hair and makeup chair at 11, but you weren't here at 11. So we'll have to see if they can fit you in. And I'm like, all right, now I already feel like dead weight. Yeah. <laughs> I feel so bad. Um, so we finally, I get dressed, we, we do everything and I'm waiting and they're going to do the other show. They come back to film my, my piece. Um, luckily my friend that I was staying with warned me how fast they move. He doesn't do one camera and then reset and do another angle and another. It's, it's like three cameras at the same time, all filming from different angles and yeah. it's go, 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 go. Fast, fast, camera, fast, yeah. fast. I was like, okay, okay, okay. So I had like a page and a half of dialogue and I ripped up my script to be just as small as possible. And it's in, I was wearing scrubs. Thank goodness. It was comfortable. And I'm, I've got them in my pocket and I'm just ready to go any minute, any ready. And they brought somebody to run lines with me. I was so excited. And so finally, 
They come back about an hour later and like, okay, we're switching back. We're going to go back and we're going to be doing your scene. So someone's going to come and put a microphone on you in about 10 minutes. I'm like, okay, okay. So then it was my turn. And then I get on the shuttle bus. We go to set. I'm sitting there. I'm terrified. I'm just terrified. I'm running my lines. And finally, it's my turn. And I go in the room and they're setting up the cameras and we're just all standing up against the wall. And I'm looking at the actresses and I'm like, okay, so I'm in the scene with you. Great. This is, oh, okay. Uh, uh, you're going to be crying. Okay. How, how much are you going to be? Mm, okay. Got it. Um, okay. Uh, and then all of a sudden I heard action and I'm still stepping against the wall waiting <laughs> for all the camera crew to be ready. And I hear a uh, nurse, you're supposed to be over there by the, by the equipment. And I'm like, okay, 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 <laughs> sure. So anyway, he talked me through it. Literally, I had one take. I did the scene and I, my character exits and I exit the room and I, I, didn't, I didn't know where to exit to because I didn't know what the framing was. So I didn't know if they would see me when I left the room and there was a window in the door and mm -hmm. I just, I, I found the scripty and I was like, well, if they can't be seen, then I can't be seen. I'm going to walk over there to stand by the scripty. So I go and I hear reset and I go back and the girl goes, oh no, this is after you, after you already exit. I went, okay. So I go back and then I heard, moving on. And I went, <laughs> okay, that was it. We're done. <laughs> that was it. <laughs> um, oh my God. Okay, now I got to get my car fixed. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that is an insane story. It, it was insane. It was, it was, is not what anybody else expected, you know. I'm, I'm actually pleased with how it came out. And I just added that to my IMDb page. I was able oh, to awesome. flip the scene. I'll glad to go look at it. Yeah, it's on my IMDb page. There's a clip. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah, that's a crazy day. And, yeah. uh, so like, I was so in my, so, and you never know, you know, but. Yeah, that's true. You never know. All the training, all the training I had, it was literally just stay yeah. calm and know your lines. Try not to hyperventilate, yeah. <laughs> Yes. And, and my first role as a nurse and I'm thinking, Oh, yeah. oh dude, this is fun. So now I'm just like, my, I come back and my good friend, she's like, girl, now you have something of you as a nurse. Now you can book more nurse roles. <laughs> <laughs> here the resident, here I come. <laughs> right? Right? The good well, doctor speaking, right there. Well, speaking of crazy set stories, I heard through the grapevine that you actually shaved your head on camera for a role. Is that true? <laughs> All right. I must hear this story. Okay. Yes. Yes. And while I'm telling it, I'll try to pull up a picture. Oh, yay. I show this picture often. <laughs> I remember that because it scared me half to death when she posted it because I was like, no. What happened? What did you do? What's going on? <laughs> this was the day after. I don't know if you can see it. Yeah. That's. Yeah. Um, so, okay. So this is back when I was still doing background work. Um, and I saw a casting call on the Southern casting call, which I love that site. Um, it's like a bottleneck of everything available. And it was, Hey, casting call for a middle-aged Caucasian woman, preferably this skin tone and this hair color. Um, and you know, um, if you've ever done background work, you're always supposed to put something in the subject line. Mm -hmm. And I love that because that way, you know, where it goes, you know, so if they're right if they're casting, you know, when I'm casting for 15 different things, that subject line tells me what folder you should go in. I might not can look at you right, right. now, but it goes in that folder. So, um, the cast, the, the subject line was Kojak. Do you know what Kojak is? Y'all too young to know Kojak. I, I know the reference, but I'm not, I'm not familiar with, um, okay. the meaning behind it. Kojak was a was an old cop show back in the 70s, I think. And the lead character, uh, the lead actor was Telly Savalas. And he was as bold as a cue ball. I mean, he was, he was shiny. He was like Mr. Clean and bald. And so anybody that fit this breakdown, obviously, if you're middle-aged, you know, unless you lived under a rock, uh, we knew who Kojak was. And it did say something about to shave your head, blah, blah, blah. The pay rate was obviously more, um, and it said subject line Kojak, and I'm like, this is interesting. I'm not exactly, it was like a red hair color. I'm not exactly that hair color, but I'm the right skin tone. Well, give it a shot. They emailed me back, and they said, hey, we're actually really interested in you, and I told them, I said, well, I have to color my hair anyway, so I could color my hair first, 
didn't do it. And they said, well, actually we're gonna have our hair, we wanna look at your roots. Can we see what color, how your roots are and show it to our, our hair person to see if, the, if, if they could color your hair correctly. I'm like, sure. So I'm like, you know, taking pictures of my gray <laughs> roots, which I have. Um, so they basically they booked me and they, uh, I drove out, um, this was for Devious Maids, TV show called Devious Maids. Mm -hmm. I it was remember like season that one. four. It was filmed up in the Stone Mountain area up there, one of the studios up there. And um, so I drove out on a Monday and they colored my hair and it was kind of like a reddish color. And um, they paid me for that. And then I drove back and shoot day was on Thursday. And they, this was about a month of prep. My son was still in high school. My daughter was off at college. I did not tell my husband that I submitted for this role. Wow. <laughs> like two days. Oh. It was, I was just kind of in a state where I'm just, yeah. I guess I was in a midlife crisis. And I thought, it's just hair, you know, they probably won't even pick me, but I don't know if I'm going to I'm sure. Whatever. Not, right? So as they picked, my son was mortified. And he was like, mom, I don't know that. <laughs> Whatever. And my husband was afraid that if I was to get picked and I did it, I would totally regret it and just hate life after that. Mm. Like, well. So you knew that they're going to ask you to do that ahead of time then? Buying a new car or whatever, having a midlife crisis, you know. So I just went through the motions and just, I went to my hairdresser and I said, um, I might not be coming to see you for a while because uh, I might be shaving my head. And I went and bought a wig. And I had my hairdresser cut it to the normal style that I had, which was short, kind of spiky, you know, kind mm -hmm. of uh, mm -hmm. flippy. And she was like, okay, okay, sure. Mm, okay. So I put my, I put the wig on with my real hair and I went to ask her to try to start styling it. She was so terrified. She was scared she was going to cut my real hair. Um, and they prepped me. They said, okay, by the way, it's not that you need to shave your head and go on camera. You need to shave your own head while on camera. I went, okay, well, I've never done that before, so, but whatever. So um, that morning, and it was because the actress playing the role, she was wearing a wig anyway, because I think her hair was thinning at the time, and there was no way she was going to really shave her head. And they knew it would not look right if they shaved a, a shaved a, if she put a wig on and then shaved the wig, it wasn't going to, it was going to reveal that it was a wig. Um so they just, they couldn't get around it. And they kept telling me when the writers sent that script from California to the people in Atlanta, they're like, there is no way. We're not going to be able to find anybody. Who's, who's got the, who's, who will do this? I mean, we'll try. Who's crazy enough to do this? Yeah, we'll try. We won't find anybody crazy enough to do this. Yeah, yeah. And when I got picked, I'm like, am I the only one? Am I, am I the only person that submitted for this? They're like, no, 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 no. We actually had like eight or nine submissions. And I'm like eight or nine <laughs> eight or nine yeah out of all of atlanta so um so i went in and and you know brian um brian what's his anyway i'm still friends with him on on facebook <laughs> the guy that cast me uh so i i go in and they they gave me the instructions and i i have video footage that was taken but you can watch the episode and you can watch it was like in the last it's one of those cliffhangers right at the last the very last shot type of things, yeah. And the funny thing was, is um, the day I went to get my hair colored, that night was, they were airing, of that season, they were airing episode one of that season. What we were filming Thursday was episode 10. So that wow. meant, I mean, I could not reveal anything, but yet I'm revealing something happened. The character that I was, I was her photo double, meaning I was on camera, I wasn't a stand-in, I was actually seen on camera, everything but my face. Um, that character, everybody thought was dead. Wow. So there was no way I could say, oh, I was Olivia's, photo. they're like, but Olivia's dead, you yeah. know? Um, she just was a glutton for attention. So <laughs> I, I went in and in the scene, her hair's long and they, she's cutting her hair aggressively and then it gets to the length that my real hair was and then we swapped out and I went in and they're like okay you know where she had the clippers because she's cutting and then she picks up clippers and then so they said do you know where her hand was when she started and I said okay and they said okay so they had camera here camera here camera here camera here. they had 
Yeah. So they're like, all right, when we say action, just start shaving it off. Let's do it. <laughs> it's all gone. I went, you can only do it once. <laughs> so, I mean, I'm shaving away and they're telling me, okay, go back up the back. And, I'm just, and, and there's a mirror in front of me. And so I had no idea how I would react to seeing myself doing mm -hmm. this. So I'm just, okay. And as soon as the cameras were done, they yelled cut. Everybody started clapping. <laughs> I was like, they're like, you totally saved this episode. Oh my gosh. I'm like, okay. I said, can I, can I get up? Cause I'm really itchy right now. I have all this hair all over. And I was wearing like a, like a satin nightgown. Cause that's what the actress was wearing. It was before she was going to bed. And I'm like, I'm really, really itchy. <laughs> so I go out and they're like, Oh, we need you to come back in real quick. We need you to drop some hair on the floor. Cause we're going to film it. Because meanwhile, the actress herself was getting a bald cap put on. Okay, so the yeah. reveal would show it, it comes out and it, you see me as soon as she's shaving it's me but then the reveal the camera comes from behind and sees her in the mirror and it's her it's so cool it's so cool. that's wow i feel like that can oh man that's cool you know i mean i don't regret it for i i would shave my head again if the price was right Wow. But Trinity, as you can see, my hair is much longer. Your now. hair is much longer now, yeah. And this is the longest it has been even since high school. So I've been playing with it and normally it's all up like this, but <laughs> but everybody that sees me, they're like, oh my gosh, your hair. And I actually worked background on another set a couple months after that. And there was a hairdresser. It was on um Sleepy Hollow. Okay, and I'm yeah. sitting in holding and somebody goes, Did you do Davious Mates? Did you shave your head? Was that you? And I'm like, yeah. So, and I met another background extra who, uh, she submitted for the role. And so oh, and I'm really? like, okay, well, it's true. I was not the only one. So, but <laughs> Proof. I, I mean, I sported that, that, you know, I mean, when we filmed driver's ed Trinity, you know, I mm -hmm. had my ball, my ball, yeah. head, you know, and it was so nice cause it was so hot and it was hot that day. I just had like a wet towel on my head with a ball cap the whole time. <laughs> <It was crazy. laughs> yeah. So, I remember filming driver's ed. With regards to acting, there's some fun stuff out there. I, I don't want, I don't really desire to be famous. I just desire to be successful at what I'm, and respected for what I do. You know, so mm -hmm. don't, you know, I don't want anybody to judge me that I shave my head. I don't shave my head. I, I'm really, really challenged as, as a person of faith, as a Christian, that I want to be in faith-based films, but not everything that I'm casting for is family-friendly and faith-based. And I really have to pray about it. And I have to think about it and just know that God is putting me in those places mm -hmm. to shine for reason. And I can be strong. And, you know, the last movie I had to book strippers you know or I might have to book people that that have to cuss a lot or, or whatever but I know there's a reason that that I and I'm not sacrificing my morals but I feel that me being in the industry is allowing me to witness because my, my church okay. used to have a biker ministry and people who are bikers can relate to bikers mm -hmm. well people who are in the film industry can relate to other people in the film industry yeah. mm -hmm. and so I think that God has been equipping me over these last couple of years to just really not be afraid to be a light for him in this industry. And I mean, I'm not going to approach every set with going, by the way, Christian coming through. Hey y'all. Hey y'all <laughs> shut your exactly. mouth. You know, I, I can't do that, but, right. but I, I can be an example and, yeah. you know, hold myself accountable to a higher authority yeah. and, and mm -hmm. just chug along. Exactly. At the end of the day, I think it's, you know, it's really about, you know, you just have to find out, um, how those, um, have those conversations, you know, find out, um, where, where you are morally, what you believe morally, you know, and then don't compromise, you know, cause at the end of the day, that's more important than any, um, any job or any film or anything like that. So, yeah, you know, enjoy what you do. And I, I love doing this. I love, I'm not going to say I love acting better than casting. I love mentoring. I love bringing people into the fold and teaching them the things. And now here I am. And I'm like, Oh, I'm able to give back. I'm just casting. I'm able to give insight. I'm able to help mentor. I have a local group on Facebook called Actors Circle, and I have local actors. Now we're doing Zoom meetings, so it's not <laughs> just for local people. Right. Yeah. Um, but I share industry tips and classes and anything I learn. I just try to pass it on. Yeah. You know, I'm on my journey. Everybody's on their own journey, and and every every person an AMTC quote. Every person's definition of success is different. Oh, totally. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> totally. 
So that is very true. Well, unfortunately, we have run out of time again. It goes so fast. <laughs> but thank you so much for coming back with us, and we really enjoyed. I'm hearing a few stories from a few of the projects that you've worked on, and some just craziness that you've you've been through. So thank you so much for sharing. Yeah. And if people didn't listen to our first episode, where can we find you again in all those those three episodes? Susan Will, oh, on uh, YouTube, Logan Social is his YouTube station where you can just look up Bryn, B-R-Y-N, gets a job, and that should feed you right into Teddy's Party and the other ones. And then awesome. Bryn Gets a Life is coming soon. Ooh. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you again so much for joining us again. We had a blast talking to you again. Thanks. Yeah, again. It's always good to see you. Well, guys, that's all the time we have for you today. Thank you so much for listening to another episode of Chase the Unknown. We'll be back at you next Wednesday with an all-new episode. Until then, Chase your unknown.